Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and I've been a little bit fed up with Windows 10, most notably their anniversary update. It's actually been giving me a lot of blue screens and random reboots for Windows updates and stuff like that. So I'm gonna be switching my operating system to Mac OS. Yes, we are gonna be installing Mac OS on PC right here, right now. So before we get started, I would actually take this segment as a disclaimer. Now, it's not really hard to install Mac OS on a PC, but it's more of uh, trying to find the right hardware. To install Mac OS on PC is very hardware dependent. What might work for me might not work for others. I would Google Hackintosh and then your motherboard name just to see if it was successful or not successful in installing Mac OS on your PC. Then I would do the same thing with Hackintosh and the graphic card that you're gonna be using. So you would know a full hardware compatibility list with your PC. Another thing is I cannot leave a link on where to get this image because it's illegal to distribute this image. So you're gonna to have to do some Googling yourself and try to search for how to get this image that I am using. It's easy, just Google Hackintosh. You'll find a lot of resources. Let's get started. All right, guys, for Windows users, you're going to need to download this program called TransMac. And that's what's going to take the DMG file and install it into your USB and make it bootable. Now, I tried to use other software like Win32 Disk Imager, but it doesn't seem to work with uh, Yosemite. So this is the route you have to go. Now, this is a trial edition and it's only about 15 days, but we're only going to really use it for about 10 minutes or 20 minutes just to load the image into your USB. Now, as soon as you get it running, you want to right click, format into Mac. I'm not really sure if this process is absolutely needed, but then again, might as well just do it and make sure it's going to work. As soon as you're done formatting the USB into Mac format, the next step is to right click on the same USB and then restore disk image. Here, you're going to locate the file that you're restoring, which is the Yosemite zone.dmg. Well, that's the file that I downloaded. And it's going to take, uh, depending on your USB, it's going to take some time. So sit back and hit up some coffee or something like that. As soon as you're done with this process, now you have your USB and then you can skip to the next section. Now for here, if you're a Mac user, you don't have to install additional software. You could actually use this utility that comes with Mac to do the same thing. Loading your USB, format it to any format you want because it doesn't matter. So as soon as you restore the image, I think it's gonna wipe it to the format it needs to be. But once you're done with that, drag the image over and mount it. Once you're, mount, once you're done mounting it, you click on the image, click restore, and then drag the USB to the destination and then hit the restore button. Once this is done, just make sure that everything's in place, that it read the, uh, the USB. And then when this is over, you're going to have your USB that you could boot with. Alright, this step is the most important. When you boot into your BIOS, make sure that it's in um, AHCI mode for the on chip SATA type. This is the only mode that it will boot up in. So you're gonna make sure that that is there. Then once you boot it up, make sure to select your USB as your boot drive. Now the next step, it depends if you're Intel or AMD. For me, I was AMD. So you're gonna have to put in these options for AMD, which is slash AMD, it'll load that kernel. And then I have a couple of other options that I had to put in just for it to boot. And then just remember that you put these options in because you're going to need them later. All right, as soon as it's done booting, next to this um, language prompt, first thing you need to do is go to Disk Utility and format the hard drive that you are going to be installing it in. For me, it's going to be my 240 gig SSD. And all I have to do is go into Erase. I chose Mac OS Extended Journal System and I named my hard drive Mac OS. Hit Erase and then it's going to do its thing and erase it to, for to Mac's formatting. As soon as that's done, you close out of this win window, hit Continue, accept this agreement, and select the drive that you're going to install it on. But don't hit Continue yet. Go to Customize and remember to add in that swatch or, or that switch or that thing that we added in earlier from the boot options. And for me, it's that NPCI 
0x3000. Once you're done with that, hit accept, and then you can move on to installing the operating system to your hard drive. Now, this does take more than 13 minutes. It took me about like half an hour, so when it says 13 minutes, it's really a lot longer. As soon as you're done, you're gonna be presented with the Darwin boot menu. Here, you don't have to type in anything anymore because you already surpassed that section that you needed. And now, I kind of lost footage. My camera decided to cut out on me, so I don't have the setup prompt that you would normally be used to seeing where you type in your username and your password and stuff like that. But no worries, we're gonna move right into the operating system itself. So guys, here we have the full desktop. Um, it's actually pretty funny because I'm actually editing this video while I'm showing you guys my full desktop and I'm taking full use of this. Here we have my Premiere, if you guys could see. I'm actually literally editing this video while we're doing this. Now, the cool stuff to see about this is if you take a look, I am actually using Yosemite, 3.5 gigahertz. It says unknown, but it's for AMD. 14 gigs of RAM. Now I had 16, but I swapped out some RAM because Windows 10 was giving me problems, so I thought it was the RAM. But anyway, now it's at 14. I'll probably switch it back a little bit later. My graphic card is being detected. I am running on three monitors. So here we have three monitors. One on DisplayPort, one on HDMI, and one on um, DVI. Then I have my storage here, which is my SSD, then my storage for other stuff. Memory, I told you the two gigabyte things, but yes, everything does work on this operating system and it's pretty damn cool. Um, I'm gonna be using it for the next couple of weeks, so I'll give more of a detailed feedback. I've done this plenty of times before, but never had I really had to use it. I mean, I've installed Hackintoshes on my laptops and stuff, and it was fun, used it maybe for a month, but I didn't find the purpose of really using it. But now, since I edit videos and do all this stuff, I find it very useful. So in the next couple of weeks, I will report back later on what I've been doing, what I've changed, uh, what I like and what I dislike about this, and yeah, I'll let you guys know. So if you guys made it this far into a video, Thank you for watching. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments below. I will try my best to help you answer them I, or at least guide you or point you to the direction that you need to be in. If you like this video, please hit that like button. So if you guys watch my vlogs, you probably knew this video was coming. I actually did like a behind the scenes and uh, on my vlogs itself, I actually show a lot of the projects that I am currently working on. So eventually I'll make it to this uh, main channel. So if you haven't done so already, go check out that video and also subscribe. So guys, I'm starting this new segment where I shout out to other YouTubers on my channel. It doesn't matter if they're big or small, as long as they have quality content and it's something that I would watch. So if you guys are into authentic Chinese food, check out this channel, Fabi Kitchen. She does a lot of quality content on how to cook the special dishes. It's quick, it's easy, and she also has vlogs on her channels if you're interested in traveling and stuff like that. You can check her out. Remember to support her and subscribe to her channel. If you haven't done so already, hit that little subscribe button on this channel. It helps me a lot, also gives you notification when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.